The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 30th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you now make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, well, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and bears, what the buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always go ahead and send me an email. Send it off early. Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, if you'd be so kind as to put radio show question, and, of course, in our Tigers Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic, fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to La Show. Right now, all the indices trading to the downside. The Dow's off 190, S&P 23, NASDAQ 160, Russell 19, Semi 70. Spot volatile up 99 cents, trading out at 1860, still below its 50-day exponential moving average. Gold's off 70 cents. Really, really good performance here, considering the dollar is up substantially. Silver's down 15 cents, about a half percent, not a big deal there. Lights we crude off a buck 28, trade out at 63.73. So let's go to our first question out here. And our first question coming in from Ruby, who is short the U.S. dollar, I believe. So let me get my currency charts up on the screen. And then let's actually change panels out here so you can follow along. And stop sharing, start sharing. Let's get over there. Here we go. So what we're looking at, if we take a, the U.S. dollar index is composed of of a basket of currencies. The euro, the, which is the chart that's on your very right hand side, is about 57 point something percent out there. You got the, and then the, the Great British Pound, the, the Japanese yen, I think they're in like the 13 range, 12, 13 percent. Then you got the Canadian dollar, the Galuni, and then you have the Swiss franc and the Swedish krona. But if we take a look at and, and and so you want to understand what's going on with those currency pairs here, I've got the majors out here. And if we take a look at so the U.S. dollar index, Ruby. So it's interesting that you took the short knowing that yesterday uh, was a TD nine count bottom. So, it, you know, it, it was it was clear we had a TD nine count bottom inside the dollar and the euro in the very upper right hand panel. You've got a TD nine count top. So when you see those patterns form out there, what odds favor is that price is going to go make a run for that oscillator and change line. I can't tell you why it does that. Not because I can't tell you why, but because I can't tell you why. I just know that it does in looking at thousands and thousands and thousands of charts for any time frame. That when you get those bottom signals or topping signals, in this case here we've got both, right? The bottom on the dollar the uh, top on the uh, euro, U.S. dollar, both of them making a run for this oscillator and change line. Now, Ruby, you're asking me what to, I'm sure you want, you'd like to know where's the dollar going from here. And what you really want to focus on, you see how price is at those oscillator and change lines. Actually, in case of the U.S. dollar, it's above. And in the case of the euro, it's below. So if they close like this, they are then suggesting to you that they want to continue to move in that direction. So the U.S. dollar index would be targeting the 91.75 level. That is the TD9 breakdown area. The euro would be targeting 1.194. So that's what they're doing on their daily time frames. Things could back off and they could find resistance for the U.S. dollar and support for the euro. Then at that stage, if that's what happens out here, um, that could mean that that is the end of the counter trend rally. 
So it's really going to be all about the close. Now, if you take a look at the Great British Pound, that's in the uh, bottom panel out here. That's just in a sideways consolidation. Certainly has an influence on the U.S. dollar index. As it moves lower, the U.S. dollar index is going to move higher in a consolidation. It's trading below its oscillator and change line. Odds favor, Ruby, that it's signaling to you and I that this wants to get down to the bottom of the consolidation. So in addition to whatever the euro might do, the Great British Pound is suggesting to you and I that the U.S. dollar index should get stronger against it. If we look at the Japanese yen, the Japanese yen right now is getting weaker by moving higher. So on this chart here, as the yen is moving higher, the U.S. dollar, it's getting weaker. The U.S. dollar index is getting stronger. So now the, the yen, forget, forget about what the euro is doing, the pound and the yen are telling you that they're going to try to push the U.S. dollar index higher based upon their currency pair out here. In the case of the yen, price is trading above a green oscillator and change line. That is bullish. It don't, you don't, the, the most bullish momentum pattern would be a rising price oscillator above zero. And that's what this chart is signaling to you and I. It didn't signal that to you and I yesterday. Price hit resistance. Now, with price above it, this is suggesting that it wants to run to the 110.75 level out there. So a higher dollar will push or pull this market. Mm. I don't think you can. I don't think you can make that um, either of those uh, choices out there, Ruby. I think it's better to just kind of uh, um, stay focused on each and take a look at the patterns and the tools. At least for me, the tools that I use to be able to describe what the market is communicating to you and I. But in summary, out here with regard to the daily time frame charts out here, watch. Uh, I'll, let me expand the chart out here for the U.S. dollar index. Watch ninety-one seventeen. Because a close above that would certainly suggest not staying with that short position over the uh, weekend. And if I just pull over a 30-minute time frame chart here for the U.S. dollar index, uh, we don't see any kind of a topping pattern or anything that's in place right now. So that's what's going on with regard to the U.S. dollar index and three of its currency pairs that make up that entire index. So I hope that that helps you out and best of luck to you in that trade. Uh, let's go take a look at the general markets overall so let me get back to that and we'll come back to my main core screen out here that's the black background one so with regard to what the markets are doing right now we're just in a good old-fashioned consolidation now when i say a consolidation not the typical consolidation that we might look at like what, what we just looked at in the great british pound but instead of consolidation within profiles so here now are the four equity future contracts. You've got the ES on the left, the NQ, then the Dow, and then the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000, I'm showing both the daily and the uh, weekly. We don't really need those weekly out there. So uh, let me just uh, turn that off and get rid of that clutter. Not that that's a big deal. But now what I, what, when I do get this set up here, we're just going to be looking at the daily time frame market profiles. Perfect. So now as we take a look at this, there is a new profile that is attempting to form inside the ES Mini. This morning, when I sent out the newsletter, it was a bearish structured profile. It has reshifted, uh, and often it does, as it's trying to create that new profile. We will not have confirmation of this until Sunday evening, but we take the information that's available to us at 1.14 in the afternoon. You've got resistance at 42.01 and support at 41.52. If you take a look at the NQ, the profile we looked at yesterday did take hold. It's just consolidating within it. It could not bust it to the downside. Chances are, the NQ signaling, I want to try to go bust it to the upside. The Russell 2000, bearish structured profile out here, it may be signaling to us that it wants to go target 2212. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll finish this off as soon as we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educate investors. 
If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got the uh, Dow down uh, 208 right now, S&P off 26. Let's go out to uh, Brent in Martinez, uh, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great, Steve. How are you? Very good. Thanks so much. And uh, Gilead Sciences, one of your uh, uh, one of the ent uh, entities that uh, you like, trading out at 63.30 right now. I know that's what you're calling about. And uh, how can I best help you today? Um, I've talked to you about this in the past, as you kind of mentioned. And I'm in the stock long at 58, but I had some options I sold. It was having trouble getting through that 66 area. Yes. So I sold those, and I'm considering, you know, trying to get back in some calls. And my thinking is, I believe this is bar seven on the way down. Correct. So just waiting into next week for eight, nine, or ten for some kind of reversal. Just want to get your thoughts on that, and then also levels that it might potentially go down to where that would make sense. Absolutely. So it's an interesting kind of a, from a technical standpoint, a technical analysis standpoint, it's an interesting play today. So if we, and what I mean by that, folks, is if we take a look at the last time that price was down here, last two times that price was down here, uh, February 26, and there was about 11 million shares, and today you're at 7 million, and you've tested and rejected the top of that swing point. I can't tell whether it's going to be lighter volume. It, it, it could be close. It looks like it might be lighter volume. The other time that we were down here was back on March the 12th, and that was with uh, 12 million shares. So we have two important swing point lows out here, Brent, that have been tested and rejected. And, yes, you're absolutely right. So Brent has the TD9 count established out here. This is going to be bar number seven today. And so the interesting thing here, Brent, is it – Look, I, ideally, you get that nice little nine count on um, uh, Tuesday out here, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, and it tests the lows of these swing points on lighter volume. But from just simply a swing point test, you actually have the bullish test as we speak right now, regardless of the nine count. I, I imagine you saw that, too. I tried to buy it this morning. You just really couldn't do it because the, when it did that, was at a point – where the options had not traded long enough. Okay. And so there's just a really, they're almost impossible to trade. There's a spread between the bid and the ask. Things had not leveled off enough at that point. Or it just made it, you could have thrown some kind of you know, price in there and maybe got lucky and got filled. Sure, 
it sure, was sure. so skewed that it really made it difficult to try to make any kind of assessment of what price you should put it in at. Well, so I'm looking at the so I, I hear you. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, uh, at the short term time frame charts just to get some type of feel. Was that test that swing point? Was that it? And, and we can you know, it's probably not going to make a, a TD nine count out here. And even that's not clear for me. Um, if I look at a 30 minute chart, for example, it stretched. It was trying to make a road momentum indicator. It actually did confirm a road momentum indicator bottom about an hour ago. So Gilead should bounce up to the 63, 67 level. That's based upon the 30 minute time frame chart. The 65 minute, really the same thing. It did generate a road momentum indicator bottom. It prices right now at that key resistance level of 63.29. So if price can close above that, 6347, 6387 become the numbers out here. Um, but at this stage of the game, you haven't taken any action. And so I'm with you on the waiting, primarily because price is still below the bottom of its daily profile. I would say if at day's end, uh, Gilead is able to get back above the 63, let me see if I can read this here, the 6339 level, <clears throat> then today might have been the bottom. I don't know. I don't know how else. I don't know. I don't have any, any other information here to figure out any different way to call it. So here's the deal. If it stays below this uh, 6339, it gives that uh, opportunity to see that TD9 count form, I would say. Yeah, I'm going to try to be a little patient. I mean, I'm already in the stock. So right, exactly. You know, that's it. And it takes off. <laughs> Fine. I'll be right, happy exactly. about that. I'm already in it. But if it yeah, gives me another opportunity next week. Yeah, you know, I'll try to take advantage of that. So we'll see how it all plays out. So let me ask you this question. If, if we didn't have a TD9 count, we didn't even know about it, and price was just testing these swing points on lighter volume, would that have forced you, would, would you, would you, even though you tried to take action, just in your mind, regardless of whether you could have got the options at the price you were looking for, would you have taken action based upon that? Um, it's a possibility. I, I prefer to, to have more things in my favor. Got it. That's uh, that's one way of doing it. I just, yeah, I, I, again, especially if it's something I'm already in, it's a little right. different. Um, so the only the, the reason I threw that out there. I have as many things in my favor as possible when I'm making you know, a trade. And it doesn't really yes. work out that way, but and there's enough opportunities out there. I think it's worth being patient. Just, you know, that you don't have to make a trade of, of any sort. No, absolutely. Something that's absolutely. So, so that other piece of information is the weekly time frame. And the weekly time frame shows that it, it has a bullish structured profile. And what price has done this week is tested that level, which was 62.96, um, and rejected it. So uh, stay with the stay with the trading plan. Uh, hopefully, you and I will connect on uh, Monday or Tuesday. And uh, uh, and what we'd really be looking for is both the TD9 count on Tuesday and a test, ideally a test of 61.39 on less than 10.4 uh, uh, million shares by day's end. So uh, that's what I see when I take a look at uh, Gilead. Uh, Brent, is there anything else that I can do for you? That's it for that. If, if you have time you yeah. know, during the day, depending on what kind of you know calls you have or other no, emails. What do, you, what do you need? Let's do it now. What do you need? What do you want to look at? Oh, I just was hoping at some point during the day, or even next week, is looking at the seasonal uh, okay. uh, you know, charts that you have and, and just kind of where we're at with that and what Absolutely. you see potentially going forward, you know, over the next month or two. So just have okay. yourself a great weekend. If you get a chance to do that, if not you know, next week, it'd be great. Just, uh, take care. Have a, have a fantastic weekend. And as always, I really appreciate your help. Thank you, Brent. Always good to talk to you and best of luck and have a great weekend as well. So, uh, Let's do this, folks. Uh, prior to uh, coming on the air, what I was noticing, I was just taking a look at who's moving up and down, and Tesla was the leader dollar-wise to the upside. And when I put up the Tesla chart, the interesting thing here is today uh, it is confirming a Gartley buy pattern. Now, Gartley pattern, you've got the A to B equals CD. So let me go ahead and – that happened there? Um, wow, that's really weird. Um uh, What's really weird is I can't get down to my A to B equals CD tool uh, to get this thing engaged. So just give me a moment here. My apology for that. That's weird. That's really weird. But uh, that's okay. Weirdness is just life happening for us. So my vertical offset, I think if I maybe just do this, that might help. Move it up. There we go. Okay. So in order to have a Gartley pattern, you're going to start with an A to B equals CD. So in the case of Tesla, 
There we go. The A point out here that I'm using for this pattern is the high from April 14th. The B point is going to be the low from April 19th. And the C point is going to be the high from April 23rd. So the one to one is 664.78. The low today in Tesla, 666.14. Close enough. You've got a bullish reversal candle that is confirming a Gartley buy pattern. Now, I don't have the profiles turned on or anything like that right now, but you do have a Gartley buy pattern inside of Tesla. And what this would suggest, profiles or not, this would suggest that price should go target its descending trend line. And the descending trend line is in the 750-ish, 748-ish type area out there. So I just threw that out there. I just saw Tesla posted it in. I didn't read the uh, the the sentence or anything but that's what's going on we take a look at ticker symbol tsla steve Rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back hi folks this is tom o'brien the printing presses are working 24 hours a day seven days a week the u.s deficit has risen 200 percent in one year with no end in sight the markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once-in-a-generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So back to the Tesla just here. Uh, I see that Hector had sent in an uh, uh, email about that. And so, Hector, to answer that question, so I think I, I did answer it, which was price is likely to head up to that trend line. I don't have the trend line shown on this chart here. And now when we take a look at the daily profile, price is above the top of that profile, 701.73. And so that just confirms what we're looking at. So there should be an additional price move. Let's call it maybe the 756-ish type area. 
uh, inside of uh, Tesla, and that is very likely where it is headed to. A uh, Melody uh, had sent in an email. Melody, if you're listening, I've got to imagine you are because you sent an email. Uh, the ticker symbol you put in here is QM, which I don't uh, find as a uh, symbol. So would you resend your email to me? And uh, we'll take a look at it. But QM is not an instrument that uh, I'm able to pull up on my system. So I'm thinking maybe that is a uh, typo. Uh, let's go to our next question that came in. This is from Wayne. And Wayne is asking for thoughts on the Qs and for CMG. So let's go take a look at the cues out here uh, but the way that i'm going to answer that question uh, for you wayne is just simply by uh well how, what is it going to be um well first i'm going to pull over this chart right here uh, i shouldn't have started that on my other s screen but i did okay so with regard to the cues here's what i want you to to understand thoughts on the cues right now what the so the cues have topping patterns in place they've got really two two confirmed uh, roads momentum indicator tops out here so we know that it's trying to set the top but in order to have a change in trend price must break through key, a key level, at least one key level of support. Those two one key levels that you would be looking for would either be the bottom of the profile, and that's where we're at right now inside the NQ, or it would be the TD9 count a breakout level. We're not anywhere, I don't think we're anywhere near the breakout level. So let's just focus here on the uh, TAS market profiles. Until price closed below 13,806, even though we have a topping, two topping patterns inside the NQ, we're just looking at this sideways choppy consolidation. As, as Brent had mentioned, you know, uh, about the seasonal chart, as we begin on Monday in the unfavorable seasonal period. But does that mean that the markets are going to crack and move lower for four weeks, eight weeks, whatever the time period might be? Well, I don't know the answer to that question. I could answer that question if price was able to take out in any of these equity future contracts key support. The NQ is the one that is closest or was closest to being able to do that, uh, but it didn't. And so because it couldn't bust them to the downside, Wayne, if you can't bust them to the downside, odds favor, price will try to bust them to the upside. So let's stay with the Qs out here, or the NQ, so to speak. And we're going to go to the 10-minute chart, like yesterday, is also the chart pattern that uh, intraday traders should be watching because it's, it's giving great signals out here. What do I mean by that? Well, if we look at this morning, when the market or the NQ bottomed, what was it? And on a 10 minute time frame chart, what was the pattern? It was Rhodes momentum indicator signal. That was at 8.50 this morning. 10 minutes later at 9 o'clock, price gets above the oscillator unchanged line and inside that uh, profile that it formed. But it goes ahead and it makes a run higher right up into the time period of 10.40. And what was happening at 1040, Wayne? Well, that was bar number nine of a TD9 count. We know on bars eight, nine to the bar following nine, that can be a high. In this case here, it was giving us a signal that that was likely the high bar because it was a bearish reversal candle, the dark cloud cover. Price makes its way down to support. Where support? Well, on a 30, on a 10 minute basis, it's the bottom of the profile, 13,863. So these profiles that you and I look at, they work for all time frames. That's really the beauty of it. You want to talk about a unfair competitive advantage? It's this one, right? It's a tool that works for all different time frames to assist you with trading. So we know that, uh, we, and then uh, that price pulled back, test the bottom of that profile, bounces higher, runs right up into that resistance level of 13,912, still with inside the profile. So with regard to what is the NQ going to do out here, the Qs, if price is able to close above 13,922, uh, Wayne, chances are price is going to go run for its highs of today. Now, on a 10-minute time frame chart, the high of today, or this morning, really what I should say, out here is also a TD9 breakdown level. So not only did it form a TD9 count, it also went right up to 13,957. You see the TD9 count, the value, the value in understanding this pattern? Nobody, nobody, I mean nobody, would have chosen 13,957 as a breakout, or in this case, you're a breakdown level. This is the only objective way that I know, and the easy way, and you watch it work time and time again out here, at least with regard to releasing information to you. So right now, what I can share with you uh, is that the bottom that formed down at the bottom of support on that daily profile for the NQ held. And you got a nice uh, bottoming signal here on a 10 minute time frame chart. It did what it was supposed to do, got up to resistance, pulled back. Maybe it's a 0 0.618, a 0 0.786 retracement level out here. What you're gonna watch to the upside is gonna be 13,921 and to the downside is gonna be 13,837. Whichever of those get violated, and 
Both of them may not get violated. It's 1.30 in the afternoon when you could just see continued sideways trading out here. But there's been no change in trend, topping signal or not. You can't get a change in trend until you break key levels of support. And I mentioned on the daily time frame, we, we have the profile levels. The breakout area, if the profile level fails, then what that's going to give us is a price target weighing of 12 776.50. I'm not going to make that call uh, until that actually happens. There's no reason to get out in front. And especially when you take a look at the new profile that formed inside the NQ, it formed above the prior set of profiles. That's bullish, period. The profile inside the ES Mini, that has formed above the prior profile. That's bullish out here. So in order for those bullish signals to generate some type of other message out here, we must see a close below those areas. If you're asking where is the buy the dip point, that's easy. Inside the ES Mini right now, it's 41.52, assuming that the profile levels don't change. Inside the NQ, that's easy. It was 13.806. Inside the Dow, it's 33.5 and a quarter. And inside the Russell 2000, it's down to the 22.12 level out there. So that's what's going on when we take a look at the core equity future contracts. Let me go to my emails here real quickly. Uh, oh, you want to just take a look at CMG, Chipotle out there. So let's go pull up the uh, three time frame charts for CMG. That's a ticker symbol and see what Chipotle is doing. Right now, Wayne Price is back inside its daily profile. And a close of about 1483, 14, suggests price should run to 15, 15 and a quarter, 1551. Price is with inside its bullish structured weekly profile. Price is above, uh, well, we got a brand new profile that formed this month. Which month is this? April. It's coming to an end today, and price is above that. So Chipotle, from a chart standpoint, other than this little consolidation inside the weekly profile level, 1438 to 1539, looks pretty bullish. But let's look at the daily time frame chart. Today's rally so far, what has it done? Today's rally has found resistance at Stevie's oscillator and change line. So it's really kind of neutral. Bullish to neutral out here. Now, close above a green OUL, 1,500.74 right now. That's what will get us back to 15. That, that would then generate the message, hey, I'm headed to 1,525 to 1,551. And that's on the uh, daily time frame. The weekly time frame, uh, let me get back to hit. The weekly time frame does have a road momentum indicator top out here. Uh, but price has just simply found its way back to support. And only a close below that 1438 level would say, hey, there's something else perhaps going on inside of uh, Chipotle CMG. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. We've got a couple of questions that are in here. One from Mike in Sarasota. Melody wrote back in. Perfect. Uh, we'll see what she was after. And we'd love to hear from you, too. We'll be back in just a few. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Melody was kind enough to uh, resend that email to me. And so uh, QM, I, I haven't traded this, apparently is the micro contract for a light sweet crude. So it's really light sweet crude that Melody wants to take a look at. Uh, and she is short. And so let's go take a look at it. And here on this uh, set of uh, uh, charts, we're looking at the daily, the weekly, the monthly, and the quarterly time frame. So it's giving us a larger picture with regard to light sweet crude. I can understand um, uh, somebody that would take a short position in light sweet crude just simply based upon taking a look at the weekly time frame chart. Now, in the weekly time frame chart, we can see that price is traded or has been consolidated with inside its weekly profile. The bottom or support area is between 56.64 and 58.27. We can see how that area held as support on any moves lower. Can't bust them down. What do you do? You bust it to the upside. Well, that's what has taken place this week. Light sweet crude got up to uh, above 64.80, but 64.80 is the top of that profile. So here's your consolidation, and you can understand Melody going ahead and taking a short light sweet crude. Okay, we've got that. However, when we go take a look at the daily time frame, what do we know? Well, what we know is that maybe there's an A to B equals CD to the upside that is set up inside of that on the daily time frame. Price is above the top of the profile, so that is bullish. We can see that price also got above descending trend lines. It got above it yesterday, and today so far, um, a Melody, is nothing more than a test of that level. So even though you've got resistance up on the weekly chart, the daily is saying, be careful. There's no confirmation of a top, at least not the way that I see it, when I uh, take a look at the daily time frame. We're going to go take a look at our other uh, white background charts to see if there's any other signals out here. So that's what these profile levels are, are communicating to us. Let's go take a look at the June contract for Light Sweet Crude and look at its daily time frame. Remember, or you don't have to remember, but I'm going to share with you, and I've said this many times. I developed the oscillator and change line. Because I needed to have something on my screen to be able to understand when was a retracement, just a retracement, so that you didn't get jockeyed out of a position. And that's what that line really helps us to do. That line tells you whether to be long or short or whether to expect prices to move higher or prices to move lower. Now, remember, there's nothing more bullish than a rising price oscillator above zero. When price is above Stevie's green line, that tells you you are in a rising price oscillator above zero. So what did price do today? Well, Melody, all price has done today is pulled back to test and so far reject Stevie's green line out there. And that's at 63.36. So the daily time frame is saying, yeah, Lee Corso, not so fast out here. But let's go take a look at the short-term time frame charts. And by short-term time frame charts, let's begin with the 30. Well, the 30-minute time frame chart formed a TD9 count bottom. It formed both a TD9 count bottom and a road momentum indicator signal. And right now, price is trading above the top of that 30-minute profile. Just, it's really at 63.70, we're at 63.69. So, Melody, 
And I don't know your time frame horizon, if you're short term, long term, you know, what position you're taking. And it doesn't necessarily matter to me. What I want to share with you, if you see lights we crude on a 30 minute basis, close above 6370, what it's communicating to you is that it wants to bounce even further or move higher. And where is that? That would be sixty-four dollars and sixty cents. So watch sixty-three seventy. That's courtesy of the thirty-minute time frame chart. The sixty-minute chart has a TD nine count bottom. It is suggesting that it wants to bounce up to sixty-three ninety. See how that oscillator and change line change colors? When you change colors, it tells us about a hookup of price and that line over the coming sessions. So you should expect and anticipate that price is going to at least bounce up into that sixty-three ninety-ish level. Not necessarily today, this afternoon. But you've got two bottoming signals out here on top of the daily pulling right back to a green oscillator and change line and rejecting it. And we don't have any signals right now that suggest that it's not going to reject it. You have a TD nine count bottom that is forming on the two hour time frame chart out here. So lots of bottom signals on the intraday time periods out here, or at least three of the intraday time periods that we looked at. And we put that together with uh, the daily chart, what you're going to really have to watch. I'm not saying you don't have to exit. Well, you don't have to exit that position now because the market hasn't, you know, you got into it for whatever reason. And what you're looking for today specifically is a close below 63.34. Now, that's going to change by a penny or two. So you'd really like to see it close below that by more than just a few cents out there. So, Melody, I hope that helps you out with regard to light, sweet, crude. I'm certain, not 100 percent, but 99 percent certain that really the same chart patterns would be in that micro um, a micro. Uh, uh, micro uh, contract for lights we crude. The next question that we've got comes in from uh, Mike in Sarasota, and Mike wants to take a look at that uh, caterpillar. So let me get that going on my other charts out here. It's going to take a little bit of time to populate, and then let's get back to the three time frame charts. So the three time frame charts for caterpillar show us what it shows that on the daily time frame, price is consolidating with inside its daily profile. Very wide profile out here, Mike. It's between 218.13 and 237.01. Price is consolidating with inside the weekly profile. That's between 214 and 237. So 237 significant resistance. That's been established by the daily and the weekly profiles out here. And the 214, 218 area is your support level. So uh, what we see right now is just simply consolidation. You're looking for a long entry, and a long entry, I would have to say, would be in that 214, 218 area. Now, let's pull over my other chart, see if there's any other signals on Caterpillar. And as we take a look at it, what do we have? Yeah, just the consolidation. So you've got wave number seven. That happened back in the uh, middle of the month. No, that was in March, middle of March. Roads went to indicator top, which has just led to this sideways consolidation. Price is below the center of its uh, uh, profile level. It's below the oscillator and change line for the daily time frame. So, Mike, be patient. See if price can pull back into that 218-ish type area out there. Um, that's what I see when I take a look at Caterpillar. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in and to have yourself a fabulous uh, Friday and a fantastic weekend. So no other questions that I've got uh, by email out here. I don't think there's anything else inside the Tiger's Den. So uh, let's go take a look at um, let's go take a look at what 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 let's go take a look at gold in did I cover gold in U.S. dollar? I don't want to cover something twice. No, I think, yeah, well, we covered we covered just the U.S. dollar, right? So let's go. I, I think that's all we covered. Let me just, and if, I, and if, I, if I'm covering it again, my apology, that's just old age. Simple as that. So let me share, stop sharing, start sharing. I want to get over to my other screens here. So here's a cool set of charts. And when I say cool set of charts, okay, Danny, we'll go, we'll take a look at uh, NIO in, uh, in in just a moment. Here we'll take a look at gold. So look how well gold is held up. It's just pulled back to that green oscillator and change line. I mean, it is really this is so it's bullish. It's bullish to neutral, neutral only simply because uh, it is. It's got a sell the D point. It's trading with inside. Uh, it's a daily profile out here, but still bullish. And in that face of the right hand chart there, that rising U.S. dollar index. So gold really holding up uh, well here. Now that doesn't mean that it will last. That hold up if the U.S. dollar index decides to rally up to 91.75, and that's the message at 150 in the afternoon. Then gold could easily pull back to that 1758 area, uh, and that's where it should find support. 
So we get back from this break. We're going to go finish off the show taking a look at NIO. And NIO, the name of that company, it's NIO. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at ticker symbol NIO, NEO Inc. out here. We've got the daily, weekly, monthly timeframes up here. And on the daily time frame, we can see that price is trading with inside a bear structured profile, and it's below 4086. That's the center line. That would suggest that price should pull back to the 3615 area. Now, support inside of NEO is at 3518. 3518 is the bottom of its weekly profile that was tested last week, the week before out here, which is held. Um, so we've just got this little consolidation. Now we need to go see if there's some topping patterns out here for the daily, weekly, even monthly time frame. And let's pull over the white background charts. So on the white background charts, we begin by looking at the daily. The daily we can see when this made its all-time high was bar number eight of a TD9 count. That went ahead and backed all the way off until it formed wave number seven, that's letter G, back on March 5th, courtesy of the Chapman wave. Price bounces, pulls back, Test that candle session from March 5th, and when it's testing it, it does it with a TD9 count. It was bar number eight that identified the bottom. 
it was bar number eight that identified that recent top. And that has just simply led to a sideways consolidation. So here's what we know. NEO is really consolidating in between about 33.79 and 45.02. The daily time frame just says consolidation. If you're looking to enter this, what we would suggest is entering around 36.15. 36.15 is the bottom of the uh, current profile. That's what the daily says. The weekly shows a, t a road's momentum indicator top. And uh, as far as the bottom is concerned, not a zip zilch. Just price pulling back and testing support. That's that support of the uh, bottom of its profile. If price did close below 35.18, we don't have any indication that that's what it's going to unfold. But it could. And if it did, then you'd be looking at a move all the way back to 1843, its breakout level. Monthly time frame has a TD9 count top, and price is pulled back to test that first level of support. That's the top of the profile at 3150. So if you're looking to get into NEO right now, the suggestion is wait for this because of the consolidation. Wait for this to pull back towards the bottom of that consolidation, which could be $36.15. Folks, stay tuned for uh, two more great hours. David White's up next. Tom O'Brien to take us on home. I'll be back with you on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Have a fantastic weekend, folks, and stay safe out there.